Thinking aloud. Conversations on the leading edge of knowledge and discovery with psychologist Jeffrey Mishlove. Hello and welcome. I'm Jeffrey Mishlove. We'll be exploring the practical applications of remote viewing today. With me is one of the world's foremost remote viewers, Joseph McMonigle, the co-author of ESP Wars East and West and the author of Remote Viewing Secrets, Mind Trek, The Stargate Chronicles, Memoirs of a Psychic Spy, and The Ultimate Time Machine. Welcome, Joe. I'm glad to be here. You've worked on both pure research projects mm -hmm. and applied projects for remote viewing. What would you say is the essential difference there? Uh, the difference has to do with, uh, with, well, let me back up. When you do a real world target, mm -hmm. it's actually better. Mm -hmm. You get a much better result then when you do something that's been concocted in a lab that you want to study, mm -hmm. you, would, you would think it'd be the opposite way around, but it's not. By real world target, I think you mean something where there's an emotional necessity. Yes, um, mm -hmm. and there, there's a reason that we think that happens. Uh, it has to do with, uh, let's see, intent. Mm -hmm. Intent drives everything. Mm -hmm. it, it even you don't even need an address for the target with intent. Mm -hmm. uh, we found that uh, you know, like people would come and say, "I need you to find out about A." And you could say, "Okay, put that in a double wrapped opaque envelope," and that's what they would do. Mm -hmm. But eventually, they'd show up one morning and they'd say, "Oh my God, I left it. I left the uh, opaque envelope laying on my desk." Okay, write that down and put it in another envelope. Mm -hmm works just as well. I mean, the point is whether it's a research project, pure research, or an applied project, you want to be blind. You don't want to have Absolutely. information about, we're trying to find so-and-so. That's right. Such That's and right. such. And, and you're, giving, you're giving up what part of your quality uh, check. Mm -hmm. For instance, um, if, if you know who, uh, who you're looking for, and let's say it's a 56-year-old woman, mm -hmm. and I don't, and I go in to do the remote viewing, and my first task is to describe yeah. the person I'm looking for. I either describe a 56-year-old woman that has certain mm -hmm. background, right. or I, I describe something else, which would be totally wrong. And if you describe something else, then they know to and discount don't whatever discount, else. Discount exactly. Yeah. Just discount this because yeah. it's probably not on. Right. Well, what if somebody comes to you and they say uh, we're looking for uh, oil reserves or mm -hmm. natural gas reserves or gold? Then you know already. Well, yeah, you kind of do and you kind of don't. Mm -hmm. You can still provide basic essential information which you do not understand how it relates to the target, yeah. but they do. Mm -hmm. So if they're looking for oil and it's in the southern area of Alaska, for instance, in the, the Denai mountain range, mm -hmm. okay, and no one's ever looked for oil there before, but if that's where they're going to go to look, you, sh you as a remote viewer can probably say this is coming out of a place that's never been searched before. Mm -hmm. It's in uh, an area of national park. Mm -hmm. You know, there are a lot of things you could say about it that are material to the target. Mm -hmm. It says something about what it is they're doing. Mm -hmm. If those relationships that you're relating turn out to be accurate, that tells you something about the accuracy of the facts. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's called... Uh, I believe the term is front loading when we exactly. have exactly. a little information yeah, about you the do target. Do not ever want to front load mm -hmm. because what happens is if somebody tells me what I'm working on, then mm, that's a, that's makes it very difficult for me to divide out or divine mm -hmm. which is my actual psychic information or remote viewing information and what am I just thinking of that I can remember The now. intellect is going to try to jump Get all in over it. Take over, exactly. Yeah. And, and this, is a, this is a task, remote viewing is a task where the ego has absolutely got to be beaten down and, and pushed, up, pushed aside. Mm -hmm. If you can't control the ego, you're not going to do any remote viewing. Mm -hmm. It's going to be effective. 
which is why I suppose a lot of people who are very brilliant scientists mm -hmm. uh, may not be good remote viewers because they have an investment in, in being very smart people. Exactly. They have, they have a, uh, a vested interest in how it comes out. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, intent, extremely important. Attention to details very important, mm -hmm. and expectation for outcome. Mm -hmm. If you don't have the right expectation for what's going to happen, even though you may not know what it is, yeah. okay, if you don't have the right sort of energy around it, mm -hmm. it just plain isn't going to happen. And by the energy, you mean, I think, a, a feeling of confidence? Exactly, yeah. exactly. It's out of that confidence that the information comes. Mm -hmm. It's not going to come out of what you shut down and don't pay any attention to. Well, it's very interesting because uh, parapsychological data, by and large, is statistical. Yeah. And and it's sort of iffy. The statisticians are have been arguing over it for decades. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and yet, many people who do real-life work work mm -hmm. saying, you know, it, it works all the time, I get excellent results, and yeah. you seem to be confirming that that the, That's right. when there's a real human need, uh, the results are better. Especially if the need involves life or death. Mm -hmm. That That is, that's the, like, essential ingredient. Mm -hmm. uh, well, let's talk about, for example, uh, criminology and police mm -hmm. work. I, I'm under the impression that when a big case hits mm -hmm. the news, the police departments, the FBI, are inundated by people who think that they have psychic uh, insights. Significant problem. Yeah. That happens all the time. And and I'll tell you, quite frankly, if you are an exceptional remote viewer, no matter how good you are, mm -hmm. if you can't sell your product, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. Because it, it, you can take that to the local sheriff or the local gendarme or whatever, whoever you're taking mm -hmm. it to, police uh, for police action, and they will they will take one look at it, put it with all the other psychic stuff, and throw mm -hmm. it in the dump. Yeah. And the reason why is they don't know how to evaluate it. They don't know what they're looking at. It doesn't make any sense to them. Uh, they don't have how to analyze it in a way that makes it of value. They might not at all be educated about the decades of work that uh, you've put into it and uh, other government programs have put into exactly it. Exactly right. And, mm -hmm. and it may be totally, totally wrong. Yeah. Because that's happened too. <laughs> right. Um, there were, that reminds me of, a, it's sort of an application. Uh, general Dozier, who was the UN general mm -hmm. for Italy. Yes. Um, was kidnapped. A, yeah, one star general was kidnapped by the Rope Brigada, the Red Brigade. The Red Brigade is a particularly nasty group. They usually kill their victims eventually. Yeah. This was back in the 1970s. Is yeah, the late called. 70s, mm -hmm. in fact. Um, well, General Dozier, we did a really good session on him. Mm -hmm. uh, there were two of us, and we were able to define that the fact that he was in uh, Ravenna, Italy, mm -hmm. I think it was Ravenna, um, and and that he was on the end of a uh, dead end road with a circle around a fountain, and it was a four a four section apartment building, mm -hmm. and he was being held on the third or fourth uh, entryway, and then he was in the ground level apartment, and chain he had a, a mask over his face, headsets taped to his ears, and he was chained to a, a hot water. Mm -hmm. system mounted on the wall. Yeah, radiator. Inside, inside a tent. Mm -hmm. Okay, I guess that was supposed to confuse him. Lots uh, of information, many details. Yeah, oh yeah, and they were playing rock music in his ears. Mm -hmm. We were getting tons of uh, really important data if you look at uh, a husband worried about his daughters and his wife. We got great data, mm -hmm. data accurate, I mean really good stuff. Uh, when you look at uh, finding him, it was a lot more cloudy. It was mm -hmm. very difficult. Uh, we sent our data to Italy. Italy would not use it because they had used psychic information from some of the locals. Mm -hmm. Translate that to mean 1,500 papers mm -hmm. and hit the place in like no time at all. Yeah. Uh, the first raid they made was on a, a house of ill repute that had one of their senators in it. Uh, his wife was not as understanding as she as he might want her to be. Uh, a second person was outed, basically, 
by this information mm -hmm. because they went to the wrong place again. So they, they notified us basically they weren't going to use the information. Mm -hmm. It turns out that they were able to capture the son, or I'm sorry, the brother of one of the Red Brigade's uh, members. Yes. And that brother was able to confirm the stuff in our report. Mm -hmm. As a result, or prior maybe from other things, we don't know because the Italian police won't say, they were able to rescue uh, General Dozier. Mm -hmm. And in fact, he was in a tent in an apartment, chained to a radiator with rock music blaring away in his ears. Um, we, we thought, this is the perfect person. We can bring him back. He's probably got a clearance. We can read him on and have him look at his own file mm -hmm. and tell us what in there is accurate and what isn't. Yes. He read that file probably four times. Mm -hmm. His conclusion was, surprised everybody, his conclusion was, you need to start a school where you could teach people how to think to aid in their own rescue. Mm -hmm. That was his recommendation. He said, all this stuff in here about what I was thinking, not only is it accurate, it's in order. Mm -hmm. It was just amazing to him. He was blown away. In, in other words, uh, even though the uh, Stargate program that you were involved in has been discontinued, Do, uh, General Dozer, who, who eventually was rescued, mm -hmm. although not necessarily based on your information, right. confirmed that your information was so good that... Uh, it could be taken to the next level. Exactly. Uh -huh. Exactly. So let's start something here. Let's yeah. teach people who go overseas who might be at risk mm -hmm. how to think, how to signal maybe to exactly uh, uh, give mm -hmm. give messages. Yeah, I thought it was a brilliant idea. Uh -huh. It hasn't went the, been followed up. Went the way it. of the yard barks. Yeah. Nobody cared about it. Right. Um, we've had numbers of things like mm -hmm. that. Well, the General Dozier case to me is clear cut in this sense that it's it's an ethically good thing to do to rescue somebody who's been kidnapped. Absolutely. So, uh, there were a number of other kidnappings where we, some we were able to affect rescue in, some we were not. Um, there was a Colonel Higgins who was the uh, he's a he's a friend. Mm -hmm. I knew him personally. Yeah. He was kidnapped uh, by the Hezbollah. In Lebanon, he was the UN representative for America at uh, in in Lebanon. Um, I I just I and a number of other people had liked drawings of where he was being held. It was sufficient information to match it to an actual location. They didn't have confirming information from another intelligence mm -hmm. source, so they were refused permission to go in and raid the building. Yeah. We found out six months later it was all dead accurate, mm -hmm. that they could have saved his life had they gone in. Mm -hmm. People get angry about that. I don't, because you gotta re you got to define the rules mm -hmm. up front. Mm -hmm. You can't wait till it's over and make the rules up. Yeah. It's got to be in the front end, mm -hmm. because otherwise that's how more people in one person wind up mm -hmm. dead. Well. It seems to me that cases of this sort uh, can be pretty clear cut from an ethical point of view, but many potential practical applications are not, like uh, people who attempt to use remote viewing for uh, speculating in, mm -hmm. in the stock market. Uh, I think you pointed out to me earlier, you don't like that because for every winner, there's a loser. Well, it, even, even worse than that, Jeff, mm -hmm. for every winner, there's probably a thousand losers mm -hmm. because you don't start calling yourself a winner until you're putting a couple grand in your pocket. Yeah. Well, somebody had to lose that. Yeah. It's the housewife, you know, that it's, it's the invented gambler that comes in there and mm -hmm. just keeps pumping the money into the, the yeah. machines. Um, or, I know, how, I know mm -hmm. it's stacked for the house, so yeah. I don't go near it. Mm -hmm. Or locating oil and minerals, mm -hmm. which I believe you have done. Also, uh, there's a question of environmental degradation. Yeah, that, that's true. Um, the only job that I've ever taken with regard to minerals was, what, what was with a specific company, and I can't tell you where that was. Yeah. They gave me an actual written document that said, and this is how we will do it, and this is how we will return it to the people. Mm -hmm. They did that. Uh -huh. Exactly what they, they said in writing, mm -hmm. they gave to me. One of my requirements when I do work for a corporation or a business, usually it's oriented at profit. 
My one requirement is they're going to have to tithe 10% to any charity of their choice. Mm -hmm. If I find out they're not, I walk. I see. And I'll tell you what, in six months, without exception, I've had CEOs and CFOs come up to me and say, if I knew giving away money was going to make me this much money, I would have done it 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's only the right thing to do. So, are, are you suggesting that this idea of having your clients tithe some of their profits actually makes the remote viewing more effective? Uh, absolutely, because what it does is it gets everybody on board in a positive way, mm -hmm. not in a negative way, mm -hmm. because everybody goes, oh, well, that's a good thing. Yeah. That's a good thing. It's like it's like building this patchwork around the, the actual target, and everything that creates that patchwork around the target is a good thing. Mm -hmm. It's a reason why it needs to succeed. Mm -hmm. If everybody's aware of those things, it, it's a fait accompli. Mm -hmm. Well, with regard to practical applications, I'm under mm -hmm. the impression that people specialize. Uh, mm -hmm. For example, I don't think everybody has the constitution to uh, apprehend a murderer. Right, exactly. Yeah, um, but there are times for that too. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm reminded of a case, uh, a woman by the name of Angela Ford. She was mm -hmm. one of our best, is one of our best viewers yes. at, uh, at this Cognitive Sciences Lab, and prior to that at SAIC, mm -hmm. Science Applications International Corporation. Uh, she was asked to uh, to try to describe an area in which a DEA agent had stolen two million dollars and vanished. Mm -hmm. and, and she was asked to describe where he was. Mm -hmm. uh, she gave that description. She said, uh, he's way up north. Now, this is the middle of the winter. Yeah. He's way up north. He's somewhere up like Indiana, northern Indiana, or maybe northern Dakota. Mm -hmm. She's not, not quite certain. But she said he's in a Motel 6, which is right next to an Exxon gas station. And behind the motel is a graveyard for Indians, American Indians. Oh, and that's she's pretty specific. specific. Pretty specific. Yeah. So what they did, the, um, the FBI, what they did is they, and DEA, they took the guy's picture in the, in the warrant and they faxed it to all of the park superintendents up in that area. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a park superintendent going home one night who stopped in the gas station to get gas, saw the guy walking into the motel. Mm -hmm. He saw the flyer, notified the DEA, and they arrested the guy with the money. Mm -hmm. Now, he was hiding up there in the winter because he knew that no one would ever logically look there. They probably figure he'd go south. Absolutely. They were looking in the Bahamas, yeah. for God's sake. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the, uh, the French islands. He, they were looking everywhere down in the south, mm -hmm. nowhere in the north. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm sorry, but that's not a fluke. That's a really good remote viewing passed to the appropriate person who can put more intelligence with it and know where the guy is. And it is. was instrumental in, in leading to an arrest. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and we have the statements by them to prove mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Well, if, if one were to look at all of the potential applications, you've got military intelligence, mm -hmm. you've got law enforcement cases, oil and minerals, financial forecasting, mm -hmm. we've uh, talked about our archaeological research, uh, we've even talked about the possibility of using remote viewing for helping to develop new technologies. Right, exactly. What of which of these applications do you think offers the most promise? Uh, all of the above is uh -huh. what I want to say. Yeah, um, I I think that the best promise I think has to do with the open mindedness of the normal American businessman. Mm -hmm. Any businessman can uh, can actually set this up himself. Yeah. and use it for the benefit of his business. If he just read a few lines about the protocol and tried to apply it in a way that, that actually isolated intent, mm -hmm. I think that would work fine. 
Uh, when, now, you, you mean business people can become their own revote viewers? Exactly. Exactly mm -hmm. right. Maybe not their own since they're setting up the target. Yeah. But they could ask other people who are complete strangers to the issue mm -hmm. to give them the information. Because it is a team. Uh, that's mm -hmm. really required. In fact, I think you and I had a discussion earlier about the dangers of having a remote viewer judge their own response. Oh my God, yes. And there are people out there who are making that recommendation as we sit here. Mm -hmm. and, and they're saying, and then you judge yourself. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sorry, but the person who does the viewing has a certain prejudice based on what they've drawn or what they've said. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's inevitable. They may not be thinking about it right then, but if they look at something to judge it against, they're going to see what they've written or drawn that's in that picture and then in the, the next picture. Mm -hmm. And that's going to confuse them because now which one is it really? Yeah. You know, they're going to wind up guessing. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's very destructive to the whole process. Judging is, is an art in and of itself. Yes, and the judge has to be blind, too. Mm -hmm. Judge is blind, the analyst is blind, the remote viewer is blind, the monitor is blind. How important is feedback? Actually, in the beginning, we thought it was extremely important because we weren't sure if it wasn't the remote viewer themselves sending the information to themselves in the past, mm -hmm. which is another reason why you never want to show the remote viewer something ve that's varied uh -huh. from the actual target. In other words, in, in many research studies, you're going to compare the uh, transcript provided by a viewer against mm -hmm. maybe a pool of potential right. targets. Right, and only one of them's correct. Yeah. Now, so, so it's essentially the same thing when you ask somebody to judge themselves. Yeah. They are now seeing two out of po two out of two right. possibilities. Yeah. How are they going to ever figure out what the psychic they're information getting, was? In other words, they're getting feedback about an inaccurate on both, target. On both, yeah. exactly. Plus an accurate target. Yeah. So, so, but what if they get no feedback at all? Indications from research yeah. over decades says it does not matter. Mm -hmm. All they need to know is it's important enough for them to work on. Because, uh, you know, there's this model that lear people learn through feedback. But yeah. I think what you're saying is that model may not be applicable. Exactly. And what I'm, I guess a better model would be, um, uh, let's just go back over it and see what tasted better to you than not. In other words, see, they're going to have to develop the, the, the methodology by which they're going to do their remote viewing. Mm-hmm. Way early in the Stargate program, uh, they were asking me to to do all ki kinds of things, you know, go into an all-gray room, uh, lay down on a couch, get your head right, you know, just different things. Yeah. And, and part of it became kind of ridiculous. They put in soundproofing and sealed the windows off because mm. the, the birds outside were too loud. Mm. Then you have squirrels running on the roof. So you have to put these bands up to keep the squirrels from jumping on the roof. And that's another thing, another mm -hmm. thing. And, and they actually had a list, a checklist. Yeah. Had probably 28 item, mm -hmm. items on Check the things that got in your way. Mm -hmm. Well, I carried that into my boss, the colonel, and I said, this is a list for failure. Look, I have a reason right here. Don't feel very good this morning. Mm -hmm. Got another reason. I said, this is an excuse sheet mm -hmm. for failure. I don't want to see it again. Oh. I crumble it up and threw it in this waste basket. checklists are very popular. <laughs> uh -huh, because they're easy to judge. Yeah. And I would throw it in this trash can and said, I don't want, in fact, I'm going to do some of my viewing sitting right at my desk. Mm -hmm. Phones ringing, people yelling at each other, asking me if I want coffee, whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do it at my desk because if I can't do it there, I can't do it anywhere of value. For, for the Army. Mm -hmm. See, I was a soldier. Yeah. And if you can't do remote viewing in the field under any circumstances, you're wasting your time. The, the Russians, in fact, their best viewer got a, got a, uh, one of their highest peacetime. Now, I think it was a combat ribbon, mm -hmm. one of their highest combat ribbons. Their best remote viewer is a woman. She did all of her viewing from a, a mainline battle tank. Oh. On site in mm -hmm. Chechnya. I see. During the Chechnyan Wars. Mm -hmm. 
I asked her, I said, what are you, crazy? You don't have to be there. You can be in Moscow yeah. in a beautiful, luxurious apartment. Uh -huh. What are you doing in a tank in the middle of war? She said, well, they needed that to believe what I was giving them. Oh. <laughs> I find that really interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, likewise, I had another, my the operations officer who gave me my assignments, you know, like, um, give us a description from a perspective of 3,000 feet and a 45-degree oblique, mm. whatever this target yeah, is, yeah. okay, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. That's not a hint about the target. Right. That's how I'm supposed to do it. Right. They, okay? It's an instruction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, he came to me, uh, this one too long ago, three mm -hmm. weeks ago, and he said, you know, it was really hard with you. And I said, what? He said, sometimes I was up all night trying to look for exactly the right words to give you mm -hmm. as direction so that it would elicit a response in the right way that mm -hmm. might give us an answer. Yeah. And I said, well, that's pretty funny because I really didn't care what you said to me. <laughs> and he said, what? Uh -huh. And I said, no, understand, I'm used to dealing with agents from the CIA, the FBI, places like that. They don't even know what remote viewing is. They show up and they want to, they want how do I write this out? What do I do? And I always say, just, just let me take care of that. Mm -hmm. Last thing that I say in my mind when I start remote viewing is let me give them whatever is going to make them happy. Well, it's, it, the key there is that remote viewing seems goal oriented. If you have the goal in mind, all of these other instructions are irrelevant. Absolutely. And the highest goal of all, if you want to call it a goal, I, I hesitate to call it a goal, I'd call it something else, but mm -hmm. it is a nuclear weapon, mm -hmm. nuclear material. Uh -huh. In all the time I've been doing remote viewing from beginning to end, you know, nearing 40 years, I've never missed a nuclear target, ever. That's very interesting. Yes, isn't it? Uh -huh. That goes to entropy, mm -hmm. you know, at least uh, uh, informational ent entropy. Which is another topic uh, entirely. Uh, fortunately, I hope to discuss it with your colleague, Ed May, who's oh, good. the Wonderful. specialist on yeah, there you the, go. the gradient good. of entropy yes. with, with regard to remote viewing targets. Well, Joe McMonigle, thank you so much for sharing this time with me. You're very welcome, Jeff. I'm glad to be here. I'm glad you are. And thank you for being with us. Thank you.